Sisters, the Lord is with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of John. Now, those who went up for the festival of Passover, there were some Greeks among them. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who, live, those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. But where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came and it was heard, I have glorified you and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the type of death he would die. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Amen. Amen. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. So as always, it's good for us to be here. Come together and to acknowledge our need for the presence of God. The past couple of nights, I... I got an old disc from Amazon, and it's entitled, I'm sure you know, The, uh, the Greatest Story Ever Told, from 1965. And the scenery, as I told Father Vinny this morning, that if he, because he was in the Holy Land, he would appreciate it. It's, it's beautiful. It's, the cinematography is beautiful. I have a real problem with Jesus with blue eyes and a Scandinavian accent. <laughs> I really do. But it's, uh, it's something that allowing us to have another medium give us the presence of God. Anything that is good that that angel of ours gives us is truly presence of God. And we don't have to say very much either to acknowledge God's presence. This past Friday we celebrated the Feast of St. Joseph. Not because my name is Joseph, okay? But Joseph gives us a wonderful example. He never says a word, but he listens. He listens to God's message. How many times do we say, unless we get an answer, nothing happens. I'm not going to believe. 
Then that, the other name that pops into my mind right now is Thomas, who says, I will not believe unless I see and touch Jesus. <clears throat> How can we not believe if we don't see and touch each other? There was something I came across this morning, and I had to put it down because my head just wasn't where it should be. This is from um, a doctor of the church, a woman doctor of the church. Well, too many, I left over to you. No. Oh, no. This is from a Dominican, uh -oh. not a Franciscan, a Dominican. So, you know, that presence goes all over. And this is what she says. Be who God created you to be, and you will set the world on fire. Be who God created you to be, and you will set the world on fire. This is exactly what came into Jesus. He came among us to do the will of his Father. Father, Creator, Mother, whatever word you want to use. Right? But Jesus came, <coughs> not for himself. Jesus came for you and for me. Jesus came that we can realize that the presence of God isn't something we just take out on Sunday morning and clean it off. The presence of God has to be with us all the time. And the presence of God is there. But do we acknowledge it? Do we just let God be God when it's convenient for us? I've tried it. Don't worry. Any of us who come up here to talk to you, we don't talk just because we want to say words, but we've experienced, as most of you have too. And sometimes it's, oh, God can't be talking to me. I'm only whatever. But that presence of God, we have to work with that presence of God. When I read the first reading, from Jeremiah, who is kind of a little dour. And he talks about hearts of stone. And I remember as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, Brooklyn many years ago, there was a song, Hearts Made of Stone. And those of us who are of a certain age probably will remember it. If you don't, you're lying. <laughs> anyway, I went to YouTube. I went to YouTube. That's in, that's in itself in the presence of God. <laughs> and I plugged in, who sang hearts made of stone? Now, I wasn't asking what day of the week is it, what year we're in, who made hearts, and all of a sudden, boom, YouTube shows up was a group of three sisters, not nuns, three sisters. They were called the Fontaine Sisters, and they sang with Perry Como. And they made a song, Hearts Made of Stone. Somebody shaking their head back. Right? And it says that the more we open that heart, the more God comes into it. <coughs> not in so many words, but that was the message. Our hearts are made to love. Us, we, in ourselves, we're called to do just that. Sometimes we hear certain groups of people talk about <clears throat> love that should not be expressed. Jesus put no limit on love. It's for each one of us to take and to share. And if you take the word love and spell it backwards, it's 
evil is not part of God's creation. Each one of us has to allow that presence of God to come into us. If we allow God to be God, created in you, we will be able to set the world on fire. If we listen to it, we might even have to carry a fire extinguisher along with us. <laughs> fire the world, fire yourself, and let God's light shine. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen.